Hello, I'm up here, Toy Cat, and with the Minecraft Marketplace refresh this week, we got five brand new add-ons. Most people are familiar with the free poisonous potato one, but there are actually four other choices, one of which will run you eight dollars or one thousand three hundred and forty mine coins. It claims to add, though, over a hundred and sixty brand new types of food, crops, as well as interestingly some animals in their trailer. And today, I'm going to be checking out exactly what's inside this, and indeed whether the farming and husbandry update is worth eight of your valuable real world dollars or 1340 of your mine coins why why do i do this to myself I'm hoping I don't regret this decision, and so I've installed the add-on on my long-term survival world. I played this for over 11 years, and I'm going to hopefully find value in this add-on that isn't just this tiny pear tree that I found on the ground. Let's see what's going on with Minecraft's new most expensive add-on. So for the discussion of value, it should be mentioned that with these four brand new paid add-ons, the total amount that you can spend adding onto your Minecraft world has gone up from 78 to 99 US dollars, which is very, very wild, and that's why we're focusing on this the most expensive of the batch. This thinks that it is worth eight of your dollars and we're going to be finding out if there is at least something to back that up because there are a lot of really fun recipes that you'll get in this add-on which are ones that I think people have been asking for in Minecraft for a very long time. So take for example the egg. This is an item that you can get from uh, the chickens and currently all it does is you can throw it to make more chickens but after this update do you know what you're going to get? One of the many crafting and many furnace recipes that exists in this add-on is the ability for your eggs to turn into cooked eggs, which is absolutely hilarious if you ask me, but also something people have wanted forever. This is just one of the many foods that we can get though, and so as another example, we can take some of our wheat that we have, uh, or indeed we can take our milk that we have and turn it into butter by the way, which is fun, but we can also take some of the wheat that we have and we can turn that into bread, and we can take some of that bread that we now still have and then turn it into slices of bread, and then if we really want to, you know what we could do? We could put the butter on that bread slice and it becomes buttered toast. I don't know how it does that without furnace, but it totally does. We can also make silly things like ice cream cones, which I now imagine if we just get the right Oh yeah, if we just get a snowball, mix up some sugar and apples, we can make apple ice cream or banana ice cream or pineapple ice cream because there are lots of new types of fruits and crops, which we can also put on toast it looks like. Is there pineapple toast? Oh, there's not. There's peach jam toast, though. So, as you can see, the number of recipes has gone up drastically in this add-on, and you might be questioning, how are you ever going to find those things? And if this were a mod or some traditional thing like that, you'd have to make a new world and look for the right biome to spawn these crops in. However, these are designed to be added onto an existing world, and so the idea of finding crops on one seems like it should be impossible, but here's the solution. If you just know what you're looking for, you will find it in that biome, even in an existing one. So, if we go to a jungle, let's say, I actually don't know where my nearest jungle is. If we go to a plains or a forest, wait, do you see that? There's a, there's, <laughs> what are you doing here, friend? <laughs> uh, so there is a beautiful peacock hanging out here. But if we just go to the right biome, we'll find an ingredient from it. So, uh, for example, I'm going to say this is a plains biome. I don't know if that's actually true. We might be able to find a grapevine or a cranberry bush or... What is that noise? Is that is that the noise a peacock makes? This is a bird making some very odd noises, it has to be said. Anyway, my point is to say that if you just find the right biome of your world, even though it has already spawned in, uh, this add-on does something that Minecraft will not, and it will add these to your existing biomes. I believe it probably has to do so quite unintrusively, maybe only spawning on grass blocks that already have air on top of them, but you can find an apple tree if you just look around your plains, and so that is precisely what I'm going to do. What is this right here? I'm going to guess a Cranberry bush? Was I right? It's a raspberry bush. Wow, okay, well that's not what I was expecting, but still, we can just look around this biome, and as we do so, we'll find some of these fun new plants. This might be an apple tree, actually. Let's get some bone mill and find out. Okay, I'm just gonna bone mill this and then see what it becomes. Oh, look, yeah, it's an apple tree. Wow, that was a really good guess. I actually started to doubt myself because I saw this tree, which had some green leaves on the way, but I'm guessing this is a pear tree then. Oh, yeah. We got some apples, we got some pears. What, what do you reckon they taste like to eat? Let's let's find out, I guess. Oh, you can eat them at full health. So do you think you get any effects or is it just, it is a pear, you can eat it? I'm guessing it's the second one. So yeah, you can get as many apples or as many pears as you like and you don't have to, you know, turf up your existing world or go exploring huge distances because you will find these very, very quickly, which I think is incredible. Oh, that's the pear tree from earlier, the one from the intro. It grew and it got me some pears. 
Nice. Can I just say, by the way, the idea of an apple tree is actually a really smart one. I'm surprised that Mojang hasn't gotten to this yet. Like, I know that oak trees sort of function like apple trees, but that's not how the real world works, and Minecraft is kind of big on that. Also, in case you're curious, why is this a tree that's not a real tree? It's more of a plant than a tree. Uh, this is actually something that is currently prohibited by add-ons. You cannot add custom blocks to any add-on, which is why so many of them do so many weird things, uh, and why instead the purpose of an apple tree is so you can make a, I don't know, like an apple pie if you want to. This sounds delicious. Let's, I, I, I look forward to being hungry so I can eat this. Honestly, that's how I see the real world sometimes too. I am excited for dinner today, let me tell you. But with that night skipped and my apple pie able to be eaten, I want to now talk about the animals of this add-on because there is something fascinating that has happened. With only a little over 30 add-ons released, Minecraft has already hit the point of having duplicate content in add-ons. So if you're curious what I'm talking about, here is the list of animals you can find in the farming uh, you know, add-on. It's very lovely. There's crows, there's bison, there's peacocks like we've seen in deer, but there's also ducks and geese. You might recall that deer, ducks, and geese have all actually appeared in the naturalist add-on. And so what happens if you play two separate add-ons, both of which claim to add a duck and a goose? Well, that's something I figured I would try and find out. And so here is my world with just the farming add-on, and now here it is with the naturalist add-on as well. As you can see, literally immediately after installing it, I find this brand new type of fish that is from the naturalist book. Uh, by the way, oh look, there's the book, it's over here. Um, so these are brand new fish from the naturalist add-on, but yeah, if we look around this river, we should be- Oh god, how is that? There's just a giant hole into a ravine from here? What terrible design. Who made the world look like this? They should be ashamed. Anyway, so uh, as you can see, there is uh, some new fish from the naturalist add-on, and now I want to go looking for ducks and geese to show you what happens when there are two separate add-ons with the same content. There are three things that I could see happening here. One is that neither of them work because there's meant to be two types of goose, but the values override each other. The second is that whichever add-on is applied on top, you know, closest to base Minecraft, uh, whichever one of those add-ons is at the very top of it is going to override the one below it, and the third possibility is that because the add-ons are all installed separately, designed for cross-compatibility, we should be able to find both types of ducks and both types of geese. So this is definitely a duck from the naturalist add-on, I think. I'm fairly sure. You know, we'll kill it just to be sure. Okay, it dropped nothing, and I think the one in this add-on dropped something, so sorry, duck. And now just over here, we have the duck from Vanilla Minecraft. As you can see, he's living his best life down there. I wonder how long he's been trapped, by the way. And uh, if we continue looking around, we might just find a second type of duck. Although I've been looking for a while, I have to say, it looks like the naturalist add-on mobs spawn way more often. Because as you can see, we've got this little red bird, we've got the weird fennec fox, like the third of those we've seen. And uh, a ton of big salmon, and even special fish. But not a single mob besides the peacock from the farming guide. Which honestly might be to your preference, but it is something just worth mentioning. Okay, we have a second duck. I could not tell you for sure just by looking if this is the same duck design or not. So, it, it looks different to me. It looks a little bit derpier. Is this from the farming guide? How would I ever know? You know, the only way to know for sure is to kill it, right? I'm sorry, duck, but eating these eggs just isn't going to do it for me anymore. I'm going to have to kill you to- oh, no, no, okay, he knows how to escape that, it looks like. So he drops a feather, and he quacks. I believe that was the same type of duck then. Because the duck meat would only come from the farming guide. I don't know how my job became killing ducks in Minecraft, but I guess I should be happy about that. Uh, the interesting thing to say here, though, is that the guidebook actually says, uh, if you read through it here, the ducks are not just found in rivers, in this add-on, but actually in swamps as well. So if we go to a swamp, we'll know for sure that it's a different type of duck. And if we don't see anything in the swamp, we'll know for sure it's not. Oh, look at this. Is that a crow? Yeah, the naturalist add-on has so many more mods, by the way. Because obviously, it's the same price, but it comes with solely mobs. Whereas the farming guide is much more focused on other things. Oh, that is a duck. So this time, by being in a swamp, we know it is the new type of duck. And therefore, all three might have been new. I'm going to have to go back and check the footage, and I'll let you know what my conclusion is. So here is the first, here is the third duck. And we're going to compare that now to the first one. You can see it on screen, but I'm going to quickly check. And I checked the footage, and what I concluded was that was the same duck three times, I'm guessing, because the third one was in a swamp, that it's from the farming add-on, which was the one closer to Minecraft. And so, we just need to find somewhere in my world a duck, or a, indeed a goose, 
from this add-on, from the uh, Naturalist add-on, and then we can confirm that it works this way. So I flew across my world, just in case that river didn't count for some weird reason. Honestly, when you have old worlds, all sorts of weird things you wouldn't expect kind of break when it comes to biomes. Ah, uh, now I'm going to find myself a goose, but that goose is also from this, this add-on. So it does look like my results so far are implying that you can't have the same mob in multiple add-ons. Oh, and, and also drowns are mean enough to attack geese. You monster. This is the closest thing I've found to another type of bird. All sorts of mobs from the naturalist add-on are spawning, but not a single duck or goose, which is very fascinating to me. It feels like I would have guessed that the two uh, add-ons would have separated out their gooses, and so there's no way for Minecraft to know that one has the same name as the other. But at the same time, I have absolutely nothing to the contrary of that, so we could look a little longer, but right now it looks as though uh, if you want your geese, you've got to decide which pack they come from. So sad. What is this block right here? Oh, I found a coconut. Okay, so despite my looking around for an extra five minutes on what is definitely a river biome as far as Minecraft is concerned, I can say there have been so many mobs, there have been so many odd things, including, as you can see, uh, the, <laughs> the coconuts we managed to pick up, and all of these other weird things like avocado trees, but there are not, there's not a single sign of ducks and geese. This is odd because if you were playing in creative, uh, I'll quickly hop into creative world to prove this. What's funny about this is you actually end up with two different types of raw goose, two different types of cooked goose, and therefore two different goose spawn eggs. Although only one real goose egg, which I'm guessing is from the farming add-on. And so yeah, you get two very different quality of goose. Oh, it's a gosling. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, okay. Anyway, sorry. Look at the Canada goose, and look at the derpy farming goose. I do have to say I have a slight preference for the one, you know, I mean, I, I think they're very similar otherwise, but you can see the differences between these, and uh, yeah, you can see that this one is just a little bit more Minecrafty, whereas this one is just a little bit more derpy and like, you know, it feels like a not quite Minecraft add-on, although maybe slightly better looking because of that bent neck compared to whatever this is. Um, but yeah, the reason this can exist in creative, even though they're both called spawned goose, is because if you actually try to give yourself the item or spawn one, um, the way that, oh sorry, sorry, summon I guess is what it is. Um, the way that they actually write it in the game code is that there are lots of mobs that you can pick between, just as you can see here, but you're actually gonna have to go to like naturalist, or I guess it's, uh, sf underscore nba, um, and then, then you can spawn a goose from this, for example. Here is a goose from sf nba, as you can see. A starfish naturalist add-on, I'm guessing. Uh, whereas if you were to spawn one from the farming add-on, it would be pod underscore farm. And so by using this descriptor before it, you can have two types of goose that the game should be able to spawn separately from each other. But my non-scientific survival testing does not seem to back that up. But yeah, fun fact. This is our first add-on with entirely contradictory features. Look how fast their geese go. It's ridiculous compared to these much lovelier... Uh, naturalist add-ons. If you are buying an add-on just for the geese, sadly I cannot recommend the farming one. So in addition to all of the animals or mobs that come with this add-on, in addition to all of the new food recipes that you can craft, we'll talk about that in a second, in addition to the new things that you can smelt to cook, there is also the possibility of brewing in this add-on. And the crazy thing about brewing is the fact that you might assume like, oh yeah, well what's that gonna be? There can't be many things you can brew, but I was actually quite surprised. So, as well as the ability to take some tea leaves, which are found in savannah biomes, and make, that's right, this is a British person's dream, you can turn your tea into tea, uh, but what you can also do is you can take some existing items of Minecraft, I always think this is more clever, and you can make some cocoa beans into a hot chocolate. There are even coffee beans and there's ginger to be found out there to make ginger tea if you really want to, but personally, I think most people will be amazed just by this, my cup of green tea, which I now officially have, and unlike every other dream, in Minecraft, it actually refills your hunger. I guess you could argue honey is a drink. Would any, would you, is honey a food or a drink actually? There's a interesting question for now. Uh, but as well as all of the hot drinks, in case like me you hate hot drinks, I'm such a cold drink lover, you can also make juices from all of your fruits in the game, because in a, on top of all of this brewing you can do, I think now is the time to mention, the, uh, also look at this, cup of hot chocolate. You are spoiled for choice when it comes for drinks and food in this uh, add-on, because I tried to count how many types of food there really were. It said over a hundred, but they started to count things together that felt like it was padding the numbers, like sushi, there's ten 
types. So there's, you can make anything you want into a sandwich, or you can make different tarts, or ice cream flavors, or jams, or you can tin up some peas. But I wouldn't say tin peas are a different type of food to regular peas. And so after I started counting, I got to 55, and then realized there was still even more to come. It just kept on going and kept on going. And so even if you count genuinely unique pieces of food, you still have over 60 of them. And even then, there's some hard decisions to make about, like, well, is green tea food? Uh, another weird one, for example, is this. Is oat milk food internet? I, I, I like the idea, but it feels a bit weird that oat milk exists at all, I guess I could say. And so, yeah, there are lots of food types to be found here. This is the dream for you if you look at regular Minecraft and you wish that you could find around your world these extra trees, which you could use to make a farming paradise. Instead of just having to farm the, you know, 10 or so crops that are useful in regular Minecraft, this gives you a full farming update and lets you go ahead and explore your world looking for all of the different types of trees to make all of the crops to make all of the food. However, my personal note would be, well, at some point you question what the point is. At some point you say, well, why do I want to collect all these types of food? Is there any benefit to making, because you can take, for example, pizza uh, and then you can have some pineapple and you know what you could do if you combine them together? You can make heresy, so you're not going to do it. But there is, in fact, a Hawaiian pizza in this. Um, but, you know, for, I, I imagine you need ham to have on top of that too. Um, but yeah, you, if you're making all of these food and drinks is there entirely for reasons that are intrinsic. There is no greater value to be had for the vast majority of foods here. And so the question you should be asking before buying this add-on is do I really need 60 types of food? And if the answer is yes, if your joy in Minecraft is farming, then the farming add-on seems like such a no-brainer. You didn't need to watch this video if you love farming that much. However, if you look at this more critically and say, okay, am I going to get $8 of value? The answer really comes in how much you enjoy the farming side of the game and how much you wish you could do that over the other things. If you just like the idea of more types of food doing more different things, the truth is there isn't much that food can do outside of filling your bar. So unless you really just like drinking a particular type of food, or indeed, uh, unless you want to say, ah, it's lovely time for a cup of tea, um, then that is all I can say for now. Oh, well, actually, see, there we go. We found one of the few foods that is lovely. Um, drinking the, uh, the this, this, this green tea gave me a little speed boost so it's a potion and a food in one but again is that enough value uh to make it for you that's the question you have to ask yourself what do you think hot chocolate does oh nothing oh unless it re-up my hot oh it yeah it re-increased my speed honestly hot chocolate doesn't make me fast in real life so i'm guessing all of the drinks that you brew will give you this little bonus too and uh therefore orange juice will not Really, I think drinking orange juice helps you see at night, but that's a, that's a different point for a different time. For now, I would like to say it's it's a myth, by the way. It's everyone's favorite fact. You don't need to mention it in the comments down below. Actually, you're not. No, you do. I, I, I think it's carrots that you eat that give you uh, night vision. Could you let me know in the comments down below, chat, if you think that's wrong? There we go. Did my engagement bait for the day. Hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give it a banana to show that you appreciate it. And I'll see you... <laughs> I, uh, I found this one to be fun. I am very curious and maybe going through every single add-on because one of the fun things that the as Minecraft adds more add-ons It becomes more impressive that you can say oh, yeah, actually I've decided I don't want this on anymore I just hit deactivate and even though I've got all that stuff in my world Do you know what happens as soon as I load it up? I go back in and all of the item slots are there but there's nothing in them anymore. I can put my glass bottle in. Oh, I can't. I have to re-break it for that to happen. Um, but yeah, there is a surprising amount of compatibility with removing and adding these to worlds, which is something to keep in mind if you look at this and you're maybe a bit more cynical about it all, um, is that there is a value to existing and to long-term worlds that you can just add and remove freely without damaging the entire thing, something that can't be said for certain mods for Java or indeed even some non-marketplace add-ons for Bedrock. Really clever part of the system, in my opinion, and something I do applaud. Here's the question though, chat. Should I check out all of the other add-ons? This is the first time new add-ons have come to the store and I haven't immediately purchased them all to see if I should review them. Um, honestly, I just seen I was the least inspired I'd ever been by some of these. Uh, but if I buy all of them, we can do a new pay to lose with every single one of Minecraft's now 27 add-ons. Do you think that's a good idea? Try to beat Minecraft all the add-ons? Let me know in the comments down below. For now though, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to do things you like to it. Give it bananas and not beetroots, please. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.